Hey guys, here we are on uh, essentially day three of working and we're getting a bunch of drawers done. These are the smaller drawers that we're working on right now. You see the nice dovetail joints there that we're doing. I'm going to show you. Merry Christmas Eve. Oh, it's my dad. Hey well, dad, I, you know, we, I did a video already and uh, some people are saying like you're a craftsman. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that's funny. So what we're doing on these drawers is we're scoring them. That makes it a lot easier for the router bit to cut through because we're using plywood. It's really important. And we got a jig set up here so that we're scoring each of the drawer sides. With a knife line. With a knife line. Ply. Just to cut through. Yep. So hand me that. I'll take that. It goes over here. And... Yep. Okay. And then Dad's going to work on... Show, we'll show you guys. So we got this Porter Cable 24-inch... Omni jig. Omni jig that's helping us cut our dovetail joints. And we're going to do B5. B5. So this is the fifth drawer on the second row. We have to make sure this piece is in here good and square and straight. Okay. And then that the side is also right up to snuff. Tighten them down. That's good. Now here comes the router. Here comes the router. We won't be talking for a little while. Yeah, hold on. I'm going to be loud. Chip out on that one, huh? Come down here. And then we flip it. Flip basically, and take V5, the oak. One. Put the it in place. The oaks are back, the walnuts are the fronts. So he puts that in place. And does his bring this side. up to snuff. He's going to cut this dovetail joint. We always need the right to come off. cuts we got to make here. That's going to go in there just like that. And then this other piece, put it over here. Bring our walnut front B5. I hope you have one of those editing features where you can speed things up. No doubt. Have you ever not positioned them right, Dad? Oh, yeah. <laughs> On good old C1, I messed it up big time. I didn't have my muscle memory down just yet. On that one. To do now. Exactly the right amount of measured out blue in each one of these holes. Otherwise, you end up wasting. 
a lot of glue on the outside. I'm having it squirt all over the place. Kind of like I did right there. So we're going to take a rag and get that out of the way right now. Now, the other side has to be. And this time we need to fill all 14 of the little holes. Okay, so we're going to take this and just fill one way. There we go. Why'd you do that? I know why you did it, but tell everybody why what you caught there on yourself when you saw that it didn't go that way. Because we need this that edge for the bottom, right? This edge is the top, and it needs to be flat. And there's a little rabbit running around. It's For those of you who aren't woodworkers, there really isn't a little rabbit running around in my shop. It's uh, actually, a rabbit is called a, a cut like this, and they call that a rabbit also. So now we're gonna glue on the bottom. The bottom is what's gonna make it absolutely square and perfect because we've kept them absolutely square. At this point, the box is just like a big old parallelogram, and it doesn't know what square is. We have to teach it. So here we go. There's the box. Just fits perfectly. Take a bread nailer, 18 gauge bread. so I can get that edge perfectly flush. So we won't have quite so much sanding to do. And Bob's your up. Let's check it for uh, squeeze out. And check it here for flushness, and it can go on the pile. So live from the University of Oklahoma, we have Mike Moynihan. Uh, you guys are used to him, seeing him, but uh, he's not always at the buffer or the wire wheel. But right now, we found a box of pieces of handles. They're old, classic, they must have cost 79 cents a piece, but they're not knobs. Anyway, uh, Mike is cleaning them up with the uh, machine over here. Show us what you're doing, Mike. Well, each of them have a lot of paint on them and some things that we want to get off, basically, because I want them to go from this to this, because I want, I'm going to use this old finish. I love the way it looks. It's kind of antique. These are antique drawer handles, right, Dad? Cast iron. Cast iron. So what I gotta do is I gotta buff off, all, buff off all of this just grime and paint and things. So what I'm gonna do is turn on the buffer wheel over here. Uh-huh. You wanna get on this side maybe? Okay. Come around over here. Okay. So again, just trying to get all this stuff off. So just being careful and this thing will certainly hurt you. So I'm starting to just basically grind off this paint. So you can see there, it's starting to look a lot better already. That's what we're doing. That's how that works. And we I'll... thought it was pretty weird that it would show up with exactly 24 that I had collected from probably 30 years ago. 24 of these handles, exactly the number we needed. We need 24 handles. And here we have 24 handles. All they need to do is be buffed and cleaned up and Bob's your uncle. 
So here we are today, continuing work on the awesome display case slash storage case that my dad and I are working on. Dad's behind the camera right now filming. And so today we've got all the drawers built. You can see them all kind of stacked up here. And what we're doing is now applying the first coat of varnish. And we used, we're just doing a wipe on uh, polyurethane right now. Is it polyurethane? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. And that's gonna help us to seal in this and really sh show this beautiful grain. So all I'm doing here is taking a cloth, uh, soaked with polyurethane and I'm just, this is coat one of at least two, maybe three that we're gonna apply. And so all I'm doing first is applying this first coat of varnish to, look how much different that looks and how much prettier that is. Mm -hmm. And then continuing along the sides here and the bottom, I'm do, we're doing all four sides, all, all sides of the drawer, I should say. This is a example of a small drawer. And I'm just right now, just trying to get a nice, first coat on. I'm trying to avoid putting any poly on the inside of the drawer because that's where the cards are gonna be. And I don't want that chemical in there um, to kind of mess with the card. So I'm being careful about that. But on the outside, no problem. We wanna get it nice and pretty. I am doing it along the top of the drawer to give that a nice finished look. And then the last part I do is the top. I've been grabbing the top to help me turn it around. Now here's one. So what happens when you put this polyurethane on is it, it'll show and highlight any imperfections either in the wood from a sanding or any glue marks that have been left on the wood. And you can see here, if we get it in the light right, that there are a couple of glue marks here. So what I'm gonna end up doing after this dries, is I'm gonna sand this down and get rid of that, because it'll just only get worse as we apply more and more coats of poly onto the wood. So you can see those there, I can see them right now. I'll set that one aside, kind of, I need to work on this one some more. And uh, so then when I get done with that, Got my first little coat on there. I pick it up and I bring it over to the drying station. And this is this would be my little, I gotta do some more work on that one stack. And I've done four so far out of 24 drawers total. And uh, that's what we're working on today. So here we are. Careful, careful, care, oh yum. Oh, that's excellent. <laughs> Are you oh, I'm so recording this. <laughs> you need like a glue funnel or something for it. I do. No wonder it gets all um, screwed up. It gets all tight when you put it back together. Oh boy, fill in some glue.